Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this shattered reflection effect. So let's get started. So let's begin by making a floor. So I'm going to add a loader, I'm going to come to the assets folder. I'm going to first of all select subfloor. And then I'm going to add another loader and I'm going to select tiled floor. Put the tiled floor on top there. To each of these, I'm going to add a 3D shape. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to instance that shape for the subfloor. So control C and then select the subfloor. Shift control V, different on the Mac, of course. We're going to set the size of this shape to 20. The transform X negative 90 in order to make a floor. So let's just have a look at the beginnings of that. So we've got these tiles and they've got gaps in them. You can see we're seeing through to the checkerboard there. And the subfloor by contrast is that kind of solid thing there. It's just something to have underneath. So what I want to do is I want to come to the instance and I want to just de-instance the Y translation. So right click de-instance on the Y. You can see that instancing has gone away and we can come back to this shape and I just want to move it up a little bit on Y. So I'm going to go for 0.05. We'll just lift those tiles a little bit off the base. So then we can merge these two together like that and then let's add a 3D renderer. And I'm also going to add to this merge a 3D camera. So I want to set the renderer to hardware and I want to turn on lighting and indeed shadows. And let's set up our camera, come to its transform, right click and add an expression to the Z pivot, pick whip and the Z translation, add a negative sign to the front of that expression. I'm going to set the Y translation to something like 0.5 and the Z translation to something like 10. And then let's have a look at our rendered output. We can't see anything. So we need to add some lights to this merge. So I'm going to add a three point light and I'm going to come to the transform. I'm going to set its X position to negative 2.5, its Y position to one and its Z position, I think to six. And then I'm going to add a 3D duplicate to the light and two instances is good. And I'm going to have an X offset of five just puts those two lights on either side of the scene. So then what I want to do is some organization. I'm just gonna reduce the size of the viewer just while we're doing this. So I'm going to select the merge and the renderer, and I'm going to copy and paste them. And I just want to set this new renderer to not have lighting or shadows. And then I'm going to copy and paste that as well. Put that up here and paste it one more time like that. And this is because we actually need four different render paths to make this whole effect work. And I'm even going to go so far as to add an underlay to these. So I'm going to select this and add an underlay and I'm going to call it floor. And I'm going to add underlays to the other three and come back when I've done it. So here we are all looking very neat. The top one is called matte. This one is called reflection. This one's called signage. And that one you saw me make is called floor. So then I want to bring in my signage and I've done this as an SVG. So I'm going to import SVG, signage SVG. I will of course give you a link to this. So I'm going to set the width to 4096, press OK. And I'm going to merge that over a new background. And I'm going to set the alpha of this background to zero image. And I'm going to set the width and height of this to 4096 by 4096. And then as I say, I'm going to merge the signage over the top of that and let's have a look at what we've got. We've got our SVG composited against this 4K background that is transparent. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you that this SVG is actually a group of paths. It looks like that. It's quite interesting how it, it actually works. And um, if you kind of disable some of these paths, you see it's all the component parts of the outline. We don't need to worry about that. You can use anything you want for this, whether you're not using SVG or even kind of the built-in text or something like that, or a logo of your own, doesn't 
really matter. So then what we need to do is we need to add this to a, another 3D shape. So let's bring in the 3D shape and that's looking like this. Let's set that shape size to be, I think probably five. We might adjust that later on. And then we're going to pipe this into the signage input like that. And I also want to now add a 3D transform so that I can flip it for the reflection. So pipe it into the 3D transform. Let's select the 3D transform. Let's rotate it through 180 on X. And then we can take this into the merge input for the reflection. And actually, I think I'm just going to group all that just to make it tidy. So that's all my signage there. And then I also need to add my camera to these other merges. So all three of those are like this. The other thing I want to do is to that mat group, I want to add my tiled floor shape. So this shape here, we want to add to that mat group like that. So that one is looking like this. It's going to be the alpha channel that will allow us to break up the reflection. Uh, this reflection is looking like that, obviously the shape upside down, and that's the shape itself. So what I'm going to do is actually open back up that group or rather expand it. And just this shape here, let's come to the transform and set the Y to one. And that's going to put that in the right relation to its reflection and the floor. So then what we need to do is we need to start combining all of this. So I'm going to add a new background for a start here. I'm going to take my floor and rent, merge it over the background. So that's looking like this. Then I'm going to merge the signage over the top of this. So that's looking like that. Then I'm going to merge the reflection over the top of that. It looks like this. I'm just going to move this mat over a little bit. And I'm going to use this mat as the effect mask input for this latest merge. And I just want to move my camera a little bit and if we rotate around, you'll see that the reflection is being broken up by that mat. And that's going to give us this really nice effect. So I'm just going to be a, do a bit of organization here. I want to move this mat out of the way because what we want to do is we want to work on the reflection and the signage. So then after my signage renderer, I want to add the following nodes, a blur, a brightness contrast, and a glow. And I want to copy the three of those, Command C, and instance them after the renderer for the reflection. So there, Shift Command V. So this renderer wants to go into there, and this glow wants to go into there. So I'm going to come to this blur, and I'm going to set it to something like six. And then I'm going to come to my brightness contrast. I'm going to clip the black and the white. And then I'm just going to crunch the black in and the white in. And what this is doing, I'm sorry about the glitching screen, it's creating this kind of neon-y effect. You can see the tubes are getting thin. It's all kind of looking a little bit more interesting. And then let's come to the glow and have a think about that. Maybe let's go for 15 for the glow and maybe even just increase the blend amount just a little bit like that. So you'll notice that something funky is happening with the reflection. That doesn't look right. We've got a tide mark around it. And that's because we need to come down to the reflection merge and turn the alpha gain down to zero. And that's looking way better. Also, we don't want our reflection to be quite as strong as the main signage. So this blend for this merge, let's reduce it down to something like 0.5. And that's a little bit better. So I've actually also moved this point light to be at four on Z rather than what we originally set it at. So if you haven't done that, make this four on Z. And I think it's going to give us these nice little hotspots here, which break up the reflection. So the other thing I want to do is I want to maybe add at the end of everything a color corrector. Have a look at that and just see if we can improve the look of the color. So then I wanted to come over back all the way over here to my tiled floor. And just before it goes into its shape, I want to add in a 
blin. Let's add a blin in there. Then I'm going to add in a blur and a brightness contrast. And I'm going to take the tiled floor into the blur and the brightness contrast into a new bump map node and the bump map out into the bump map material for the blin. I don't know where we'll be able to see this. Depends on which bit of the floor we're looking at. I'm going to increase the bump map height scale, first of all, to something like 10. And the blur, I'm probably going to go for something like 5 or something. You can see how that's already starting to work. And let's come to our brightness contrast. Let's clip the black and white. And then let's just adjust these low and high values until we've got a little bit more texture in there on that floor. So then let's set up our camera move, come back down to our camera. I've set my timeline range to be 240 frames. I'm up parked at the first frame. I'm going to keyframe that Z translation at 10. And I'm going to keyframe the Y but let's start with negative 20 for that rotation there. And then let's come to the last frame. Let's set this Z translation to 12 and this Y translation to 40. So then if we look through, we're kind of getting some pretty nice effects like that of the reflection being broken up. Now, if we come to that last frame again, I notice that we've eaten away our sign a little bit too much with that blurring routine. So let's come back to this signage renderer blur, this blur here, and let's set that blur size down to four. And that just keeps it a little bit more intact. And finally, I want to come down and look at the point light. I want to set its decay type to linear and let's set its intensity to 0.25 and its decay rate to, I think, 0.15. It's a little bit better. We're not blowing out too much. I think 0.15 is good. And there's one final thing you might want to try, and that's to come to this merge here, the one that's got the effect mask on it. And if we come over to settings, uh, let's switch the channel from alpha to luminance. And it's giving us even more breakup because it's actually using the, the RGB component as well as the, the alpha component. And arguably that's even even nicer. So there you go. I th hope that's been interesting. Quite a lot of techniques involved there. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again soon.